welcome to our overview of Power BI in Dynamics 365 Business Central and also Solver, a corporate performance management reporting tool. Basically, what you would like to do is bring all your system together into one reporting tool, which is going to allow you to slice and dice your information. So let's have a look and start with Power BI. So Power BI is a Microsoft Business Intelligence product that allows you to, as I said earlier, to slice and dice your information based on how you want to analyze the data in the format that you want. So while we can access Power BI outside of D365 Business Central, we can also have these dashboards appear within BC. So let's just have a look at what we can do. So again, I've opened up my Power BI. And what I've done in here is I've actually clicked on, or I've got a few favorites of mine, and one of them is the retail sample. Again, these are, retail, are just examples that have been set up by Microsoft. But if I click on it, you will see that there's a few things in here. So I've got some KPIs, I've got some graphs, I've got some um, gra geographical maps, and I've got some more charts down the side here as well. So you would most probably build your report in here. Once it's been built, all you need to do is go across to your business central, scroll down, and come to the area where it's called Power BI. Again, I do need to make you quite clear that you would need to have the right license type and possibly a Power BI license. So please check with your administrator first whether you can actually do this. So to set up your report, you come down to the section called Power BI, and again, we've got select reports. In this case, you would actually get your reports, which will come in from Power BI, and you can see I have a whole lot in here. So this is the one I'm going to be looking at today, and you just need to make sure that the reports are enabled. If they're not enabled, then you will not be able to see them. So my one has been enabled, and I can see it coming up now. Now, sometimes, as you'll notice, this is like quite small on my particular screen. So if I want to look at it, I will just go to manage report and it will actually pop it out so I can look in more detail. So our initial view will show me what I saw in Power BI. But again, I've got my filters, visualizations and some fields. So in this case, just to get rid of the extra information I do not want to see, I can go straight to view mode. And again, you can see here I've got all the different pages. And this will allow you then just to basically click and analyze your data depending on what you're wanting to look at. So again, I can come back to my overview. Let's look at Lindsay's. And then from Lindsay's, let's look at this one here. And you can see that's now showing up on the geographical map. So that just shows you how you can develop your um, reports or your dashboards in Power BI and bring them through to Business Central and actually work with your Power BI reports within Business Central without having to go out to Power BI. The next one we want to look at, the next reporting tool, which we use on a frequent basis, is basically something called Solver. Now, Solver is a corporate performance management tool, and it works with most ERP systems. So what it does is it brings all the information from your ERP system into what we would call a data warehouse. So you can see I've got accounts payable coming in, I've got accounts receivable, I've got my general ledger, and I can also bring in data from other third-party systems, maybe Google Analytics, maybe your payroll. So it's allowing you to bring all your data together, not only from third-party systems, but also if you've got multi-companies and multiple environments, you can bring all that data together. So if we come back and look at our report templates, I've got a particular category here that I use, which is my demo reports. And you can see I've got some examples in here. So while I can have individual reports, I can also put these reports together into what I would call a package, and then I can run my package. Let's have a look at some of the examples that I've got here. So here I have the KPI flash report, really simple. It's all been developed in Excel, so as long as you know Excel, you should be fine to develop these yourself, or we can assist with that. Again, we've got the capabilities of just right-clicking on some of these fields and actually drilling down into the actual data. So in this case, I'm actually getting to see the transactions behind the scenes here if I want to question what is actually happening and why is that figure so high. 
which is really useful if you're going to be doing a presentation back to your board and they're questioning these figures, you have this nice capability of drilling down. You can also use your standard Excel features such as the traffic lights. Another report that we would have would be our consolidating tree report. In this case, I have run it and if I run it, I can run it basically down at an individual corporate level or I can run it at a region level. And it is just one report, but with one report, but with a, using a tree, I can just run it different ways instead of having to have two or three different reports to actually get the data, I just write one report using my tree and you can see there's my Asia region, which basically incorporates Asia and EMEA. So that's also pretty useful. Another one that we find that most people enjoy is the, what we would call a narrative report. Um, sorry, well, one there. Let's go back and choose this one, which is our briefing card for executives. So what you would do is you would design the report and you would say based on certain parameters, we will use certain wording. So in this case, we can go sales are up. So obviously my I had a positive percentage in my figures here, in which case it then knows to use the word sales are up rather than down. And it's obviously said with a increase rather than a decrease. So it's very intuitive and you can build this yourselves. In here, we have just got pretty much standard Excel graphs down the side here, um, charting, um, we've got just grid type of information. And you can also see that I've also got links to other reports if need to be. And I can also go and click in and look at other reports if need be. And I don't think there's any data down there. But it just gives you an idea that you can actually produce these reports. Now, when I run these reports, they will actually go off into the archive area. And you can see I've run this particular report, my PL analysis monthly, back on the 16th of June. So if I was to open this, this would give me the state of play as that particular date. But if I click on this one, it will give me the state of play as of the 17th of September. So that's really useful. I can also you have what I would call playlists, demo playlist. Let's click on this one and I can show my playlist. Now this is very good if you're presenting back to a board or a, or a management meeting. So you can see this is my PL analysis monthly. I've also got my PL departments, I've got my PL companies across with trees. But again, I can also have packages. So here's my package run financial reports, and within my package you will now notice I have got several reports that I have actually combined together. So this is a really good way to do a presentation and it's all there for you. And don't forget when you have these reports, as long as you've written the report correctly, you will have the general ledger detail or drill down or whatever it's drilling down into, whether it's your accounts payable or accounts receivable. So that's really good for presentations and being able to answer the questions of, why is everything high or why is everything so low? Now, the other nice thing with Insolver is it has a budgeting module or planning module as we would call it. So let's go and have a look at some of these as well. So I've got one here, which is called other expenses. Let me go and open it up. So I'm doing my budgeting. And again, I have now chosen a particular company. I've chosen a particular department with a particular period. I'm also editing my budget, but I can also have a forecast in there as well. So if I come down to travel, you'll notice there's a figure here of 2991. Now, if I want to update that figure, I can go into each cell or I can quickly come down here and I can just put a straight amount in there and choose a distribution rule, depending on how you want to do it. And I'm just going to spread. And you'll notice it's spread it out evenly for me and it's updated the top here. Now you'll notice there are some cells that are locked because it contains line details. So when it comes to special events, you may want to actually detail, well, how do I get to that figure of 312? I can come in and say, well, I'm going to spend 100 on the Mine Expo, I'm going to spend 200 on the trade shows, and I'm going to spend roughly $12 a month on a third party vendor. So again, you can come in and put all these details in here and it will update accordingly. And you'll notice that now my figure has changed to 3215. So that's a quick way of, of, of 
putting in your budgets and then these budgets will obviously be once I've saved the data they will then be available in all my other reports. Now if you are an organization where you distribute all your budgets to your various managers you can create what we would call a workflow. So on the workflow if I have a particular look at this one here you can see I've set this up. I am the reviewer and I'm also the approver. I set my parameters and again I can decide whether the user can change these or not and I've got two reports to go out. One is the capital and one is the other expenses. So once that's been set up and distributed, if I was to log in, um, you will now notice I've been given these assignments. So I have two assignments here. One as you see was solve the budgeting, one was a test. If I go into solve the budgeting, this is what's been assigned to me and I can also see who else is going to be involved. So I can see Paul has been in, is going to be involved. I've got this one which I'm actually working on at the moment, but I've also completed this one. As you can see, it's now being passed to my reviewer. So all I would need to do is actually come in here, put in my budget, save it, and then once I've done, I would mark it as complete. Once it's complete, it will send a notification back to the person who's the next person in line. So if I come back to my budget, solve a budgeting and look at the status, at any point in time, because I've set up this workflow, I can then check what's new, what's in progress, what's ready for me to review, what's been re reviewed, and what's been completed. So in this way, I can keep a good track of what's going on on the budgeting process. So hopefully this just gives you an idea of some of the capabilities in this particular reporting tool. And don't forget that you can set your Power BI on top of that. So it's just another option if you want to start bringing all your data together in one reporting tool. Thank you.